Hey, I'm Faith Theros with WHYT, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing the amazing Miss Fiona Dorif. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> so while I'm very aware, and I'm sure most people watching are very aware of who you are and what your work is, I'd very much so like you to introduce yourself as if we didn't. <laughs> Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, so I am a uh, an actress who does um, a lot of genre stuff that I think um, uh, teenagers are quite into, though I've done um, film and television for about the last 15 years pretty solidly. Right now I'm on a show uh, called Chucky of the Killer Doll, which is a franchise I've been involved with for uh, maybe my whole life. <laughs> um, that is very fun to make and people seem to be enjoying it. So. They do, they do. Uh, if it's no trouble, I'm ready to go ahead and kick things off. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so starting off with a bit of a smaller question. Um, while I have my personal picks, and I'm going to leave those, you know, where they are, what would you consider your the highlight of your career, the best performance you've had thus far? Well, so the little secret about me is I hate watching myself more than anything in this world. Um, I try I try to avoid it, though I think part of this process of being a performer is that you kind of have to train yourself to do it. So I never see myself accurately, I'm sure. Um, but I think the role in which I was able to um, explore the most and take kind of the wildest swings is um, a TV show called Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, where I was cast as a kind of like homeless, uh, half male, female, holistic assassin. Oh, be nice who, to Bart. Who had like a good heart, but killed everybody. Yeah, her name was Bart. She was written as a man and cast as as me at the very last second. Um, so that I was able, I was able to do whatever I wanted in a <laughs> cool way. Um, so I would say Bart. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's by, I, I think the homework or creating how the person walks through the world is is by far my favorite part of, of acting. Um, my What I do in order to have it click in changes all the time. Also, exactly what acting is is still a mystery to me in a way that I think is um, makes it forever interesting and difficult. But I'll say this, like before I am ever in a project, I have thought about what makes that person tick and what they're after and what the like couple kind of gestalt or big things that have happened in their life uh, are and and why, are they, why, why they're doing what they're doing in the most in-depth, emotional, kind of instinctual way. Um, and hopefully that comes to screen, I don't know, but most of the time, everything that I've said, I've thought about so thoroughly. <laughs> um, and then sometimes you see it on screen and you're like, God, what I was what I was thinking about or whatever, like in context of the story and how it was shot and everything like isn't there. <laughs> um, but I've done it. <laughs> and and um, yeah, so there's a lot of that. And then and then a, a, a thing about acting that I think is interesting is you are such a cog in the wheel. So um, you can per you can prepare and you can um, you can have this kind of really linear like constructed idea of what this person's journey is, and at the end of the day, you are one small part of a pie. And really, it's an editor at the end who creates the story. So going back to a smaller question, because that was a nice little slightly more in depth question. We got a big yeah. We had an overview. What okay. This probably isn't a question most people like to have asked, but what is your least favorite aspect of acting or being an actress? Oh my God. Uh, are you kidding? <laughs> I can talk about this all day. Sure. You. So the hardest thing about my life is number one, I live no place, uh, which is both great, but bad. I mean, I have, I've been based in Los Angeles for a long time. This year I've spent collectively probably 40 days in Los Angeles. So my cat doesn't know who I am. Um, <laughs> uh, and also, I, you never know how much money you're going to make. You never know. Uh, it's very hard to make like big adult life decisions with money because you don't know if you're ever going to work again ever. Um, and uh, so there's so much uncertainty. There is so much uncertainty. Um, and I was, for example, um, 
a bartender for 18 years before I started to work regularly, right? Wow. So there was a long stretch of my life where um, I, uh, I I understand the value of money. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I think that the uncertain, I think that this is generally a job for either people with a trust fund, which unfortunately I did not have, or people um, with a great nervous system. <laughs> I don't know why people bother jumping off clips when you can just be like an actor. <laughs> you can like, be an artist. That, that's the thrill. <laughs> And also there's a thing about acting where the people who are able to work and make it, you know, aren't necessarily better than the people who don't, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's such a sought after thing. And um, there's a real, I think with most of life, there's a lot of uh, luck, um, but it's very acute in acting. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have momentum, you can work and there's some, there's talent and all that that comes into play, but, um, but, the, but the luck, um, the luck is really is really clear. <laughs> um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think right now. First off, I really have to work to make myself watch myself. Um, I think that not everybody's like that, but for me, all I see is what I would want to approve. So it's very hard for me to see the forest through the trees. Um, I'm getting better at it, but very slowly. Uh, today, I actually have to go to two screenings of films that I've done back to back, which is sounds like some fiery version of hell, but I'm doing it. God bless. Um, <laughs> uh, Lance Hendrickson, I don't know if you guys know that actor, but he was the one who's forcing me. He's like, buck up, kid, and <laughs> get here. But anyway, um, uh, right now, I think I, I think it's, I watch performance. So I, a lot of my performance in this television show is opposite Jennifer Tilly, who is such a talented actress and she takes wild swings, right? And, right. and when you're on set with her, she, um, what, what they use is a fraction of what she does, right? So she is not afraid to go wildly big. Right. Um, and and f that, at times, <laughs> I have been too internal, right? So I'll watch my performance and I know that I was in the scene and I meant everything and it was spontaneous and I was lost, but it's small, right? And, and, uh, it's I can be small and still in a way that is real but less interesting. It's like playing it safe. And so what I'm trying to do now is just take bigger swings. You know, uh, yeah. do, you, do you ever feel like you stop discovering flaws like these? Do you ever feel like it comes no. to fault? Me. <laughs> yeah. Not my personality. No, no, no. No, no. I'm I'm one of those people that's conditioned to to see um in, to see where I could improve as opposed to applause, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so I would say, I would say thoughtful horror is, is what I would love to be involved in. And also I think that Chucky is, has legs because it's a version of that. Oh, yeah. It's that mixed with wackiness. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I would do, I would do I would do that. I also really want to actually act with my dad. Um, oh, so in person. We've been, in person. Yeah, we've been adjacent, but we've never done a scene together. That's... So if you want to write it for okay. the Durafs, okay, make it good, and the Durafs will do it. Okay, fine. I'm gonna I'm just push everything aside. This is my so your homework. Thoughtful horror <laughs> starring Brad and Fiona Duraf. Okay, Brad and Got Fiona Duraf. Yeah. I watched the Shrew Project, and I saw your dad's name in the top of it. I'm like, wait a minute. There's no way. And like his scene was was completely away from you, and I was just like mm. separate. And I, I know Parker so as a character. Nice. I wanted to see Parker interact with the, <laughs> the dad. What pushed you to take that step? Like, what what encouraged you to go ahead and do that? Yeah, I have a very specific answer for you. Actually, oh, amazing. I was. Um, I was a documentary producer, so I produced his, I produced um, shows for the History Channel and for Discovery, and it was like 
you know, what do we know about physics? Or I, I produced a, a show on sharpshooters or like large machines. It was really interesting work, right? So you got to learn all about these specific things and then make a TV show about them. Um, but I was young, I was 23, and the decision I got, I got cast in, the decision was either I could keep doing this and play it safe or take a big risk. Mm -hmm. Right. And I thought to myself, I love the actual, the doing of acting, not necessarily the world you have to inhabit around acting, but the actual performance of it. And it is the braver choice. And I said to myself, I need to be brave. And it would took a very long time until I could support myself on acting. I'll say that for the people out there. My, I had someone tell me it takes 10 years and that's exactly how long it took. Oh, wow. Um, for me to start pursuing it and to really be able to make a living, which is a very long time. I would say if you're pursuing acting, 15 years down the line and you still can't support yourself maybe you want to do something in tandem but <laughs> give it 10 years um and uh and I'm glad I did I have a cool life I have a I have a cooler life than I ever thought I would <laughs> I'm I got luckier than I ever thought I would um you know <laughs> Everybody, listen, the coolest people in the world were also in the service industry. I'm always like a little suspicious of the people who've never touched it. I'm oh, like, yeah. there's a part of life that you don't understand. You bought your way to this. There's no way you didn't pay <laughs> customer service to get to work. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody, no matter how rich, like my, my rich friends, their kids, I'm like, make them wait tables for a summer. Oh, They'll hmm. turn into better adults, I oh, promise you. Make them do it. I, th I think customer customer service is the most underutilized tool in the fine arts ever. Oh, how but, do you mean? Well, okay. You, I, I think if more people were to go through things like that, it would seriously show yeah, them how I to mean, put on a face. Absolutely. So my interpretation of what you're saying, which I think has to do with acting, is you were able to kind of cut through and really connect to the person that you're oh, talking yeah. to, regardless of kind of how you're feeling, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's, there, there's something that's really valuable and, you know, really valuable in every kind of business. It's a real skill. Oh, yeah. um, and it also is 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 valuable in, in acting for sure. I mean, it's oh, yeah. half of acting. The best there is. And on this note, Faith, I have to go to watch myself in a movie and not pick myself apart. Oh, it's going to be yeah. useful. So thank you very oh, much for your time. Yeah. yeah, well, thank you very much. I, you know, it was a pleasure to talk to you. You're, you're for a fun chat, so. <laughs> oh yeah, watch Chucky, bye. See ya.